proudly representing the 157 members of an actor Southampton. We are Elliot, Kat, David, Josh, Tika, Josh, and Adam joins us in technology. But we are a mere representation of the passion, devotion, and dedication embedded within our team. In powering lives through innovation for six years, an actor Southampton strives to build upon our experience and the principles and values of diverse. We develop human potential through powerful and sustainable solutions to the problems people face. This is possible because of our partners who we support and care deeply for and who have the heart of what enables us to impact so many lives. To continue changing these lives, we need to be financially sustainable. We achieve this for our four profitable businesses which generate our social project investment, meaning we do not rely on our rights. We build the of our project on sustainability and we're excited to see this happening communities all around the world. Our mature project, Brighton, previously established an entrepreneur called Kelvin, who rents out solar lamps to eradicate dangerous kerosene to do anything. This year, he shows true and calm, not only teaching others about his business, but by reinvesting his profits from his 10 initial solar lamps into 142 new ones. It is this kind of sustainability that we build into all of our projects. Last year, we piloted Sanico in the community of Kisi, Kenya, improving the lives of 98 people. This year, we have dramatically developed and scaled this project, improving the lives of over 6,400 people. We have done this through our three life-changing solutions, an innovative, reusable sanitary towel, an eco-friendly composting toilet, and a brand new solution we're excited to tell you about, a breakthrough bar of soap. This is Sanico's story. It all started with Kennedy. Kennedy is a part of a local NGO, Rita Gregoire. He told us that people in his community were living in unthinkable conditions. So we conducted needs assessments through questionnaires and video footage. We were truly saddened by what we found. <laughs> I personally was shocked to know that women and girls are using leaves or a worn dirty rag to handle their next recycle. This is a major threat to their health and lowers them to a shameful position in their society. So, we introduced an innovative and affordable solution, the Sanico Sachi Towel. Our towels are tailored to the women and girls in Kissy and are over 28 times cheaper than the next best alternative. They are handmade from locally sourced materials and sold in packs of three, so we have one to wear, one to wash, and one to dry, making them hygienic. In Kissy, there are many widowed women who live on an average of just 90 p a day, left alone with their husbands who struggle day to day to support their families. One of these women is Leah. When she heard about Sanico, she was eager to become a Sanjay Tao entrepreneur. With the help of one of our original entrepreneurs from last year, the education packs and step-by-step -step manual that we created, Leah learned the skills and knowledge she needed on how to make and sell the sanitary towels, how to run the business, and vital menstrual health education. To get to her business started, we gave Leah a flexible microfinance of £19 to buy the materials we did, such as cotton, needles, and buttons, and to produce her first batch of sanitary towels. With the lack of menstrual health education in her community, Leah was determined to create lasting change through her business. By creating a unique marketing strategy, she is able to teach women and girls vital menstrual health education, boosting her confidence and creating understanding in the community. Leah told us how sending towels brings her happiness and confidence, and how she now wants to be the role model of her community, improving her quality of life. Her income has now increased by 34%. This is what it means to her. But Leah had the desire to create more change in her community, so we enabled her to go one step further by teaching her how to negotiate and build a supply chain. She now sells in bulk to a local shop, scaling both her income and impact upon the community. This is 
it's not just the European story. This year, we've worked alongside the fact that 29 widowed women whose lives have also been transformed by running their very own sanitary health businesses. Together, they have taught vital mental health education at five local schools and sold over 6,000 packs of sanitary towels. These women no longer feel in prison. They have hope for a better future. But through getting to know the village of Kissy, we realise another distressing need. A need that shocked us all.
This year, over 6,000 packs of surgical towels have been sold, teaching over 6,000 women and girls vital mental health education, giving them dignity, hope, and a better future. The toilets have sunk over 5,000 bottles and removed over 34 tonnes of human waste. That is enough to completely fill a shipping container. It has been a huge privilege to work with the people of Kissy. This year, Sanico has gone even further than we could have ever imagined, creating sustainable and scalable solutions, transforming the community and improving the lives of over 6,400 men, women and children. But this is just the beginning. Think about the potential these solutions could have for sanitation to other communities in Kenya, to communities all around the world. Although the people of Kissy have become very close to our hearts in recent we know all too well the real social challenges faced in our own city of Southampton. There are still too many local people who are isolated from society and feel rejected, excluded and unfulfilled. We have, using our experience in Kissy, modified our social enterprise models to meet the very different but equally important challenges sitting on our doorstep. This is Sam. He stayed in Kirkland Bacchantry while serving our country. Now he's unable to support his family financially. This is Andre. He came to the UK for a new life, but only faced exclusion from society. This is Emma. She wanted to set up her own business to engage with other women in Southampton, but was stuck in a cycle of isolation. Even though these needs are very different, their fundamentals are similar. They all want to engage with society by running their own business to support their families. So we came up with a simple but powerful program which can adapt to address all of these needs. This is our four stage program, Find Your Path. First, we identify our participants, their personal ambitions and the barriers they face. We then deliver tailored education so they can develop useful and practical skills. Utilising our networking resources, we help our participants achieve the independence of running their own business. To make sure that businesses constantly grow and develop, we provide ongoing support and mentoring. This year, Find Your Path has worked with 40 people. And we met some of these through Cash 22, who work with vulnerable women. This is where we met Emma, and this is her journey. Imagine being 17 years old, you have lost your mother to cancer, and your aunt, who's meant to be looking after you, spends the family's benefits on drugs and alcohol leaving you alone to take care of your seriously ill now and 30-year-old brother. This is Emma's reality, segregating her from society, trapped in her own home, causing her to drop out of school, entering a cycle of isolation. This prevented her from achieving her dreams of running her own business. Emma desperately wanted to change this reality, so together with the other women came up with making and selling candles. Emma even came up with the name of the project herself, giving her a sense of ownership and responsibility. Now this may seem like a small achievement to some, but to Emma, it was everything. Emma was excited to learn how to start her own business. She attended our training sessions on business basics, packaging and differentiation. She then took this knowledge and adapted her business idea, creating personalised candles, so her product had a unique selling point. She also created posters, taglines, and a website for our online sales. Emma then sold these candles independently of us. It was incredible to see how happy interacting with the public made her. In just one day, over £75 of profit was generated, which was reinvested into more materials, which were then sold online. Emma's ambition was to sell her candles in shops and at craft fairs. So we adapted the business plans we gave our Sanico Tower entrepreneurs. This helped her with the negotiations and started ensuring the financial sustainability of her business. Realising her dreams of helping the other women in the community. Emma now has the flexibility to go and see her friends and start enjoying life. She is confident now that she'll have a true empowerment when she taught her younger brother how to save money so he can enrol in university, bringing her family together and finally breaking her cycle of isolation. It's calming and has been fun and helpful, so I'd like it to carry on because it gets me out of the house and I'm concentrating on something else and don't have to worry about anything. Because when I'm at home, I have my home problems. When I'm with friends, I have their problems. But when I come to Ignite, it all just disappears. We are humbled to experience the incredible development in Emma, but she is not the only individual fulfilling her ambitions through our programme. We told you about Andre and Sam. Both have set up their own successful businesses to find your part. Andre has created his own clothing business, allowing him to feel included and accepted by a community which previously rejected him. 
Sam to set up his own photography business, giving him the confidence to take back his life and start a family. But Find Your Path hasn't just worked with these three individuals. 37 hours are going through the program and are at varying stages of development. We cannot wait to see the businesses that they set up, not only creating employment for the people of Southampton, but also allowing them to create a sustainable future for themselves and their families. We embody the philosophy of helping those that need us the most. In that to Southampton is not restricted by borders, languages or backgrounds. We are proud of the successes and change that our projects have had on the lives of others, abroad and in the UK. We have dramatically scaled our Sanchi solutions, enhancing more lives in the Kissy community. We have transferred lives to every rural Africa through the power of solar lighting. We have developed the human potential of vulnerable women in Southampton. But we are not just the project. We have inspired young migrants to take control of their futures. We have transformed the lives of ex-military in our community. We have motivated the different able to rejoin society. We have enabled the disadvantaged youth to gain employment. We are not just students. We are innovators. Business leaders. We are community. We see opportunities. We have made the progress. And then we acted. Together we are in an active Southampton. Thank you very much for everything. The belief in their, themselves and the skills that they may have had before but have definitely developed on. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Elmatas Bright Light Project. We are lighting homes but we are also changing lives. Thanks so much, Sonic. KPMG. Could, could you tell us a little bit um, about the Find the Path, Your Path project? How do you identify the people that you help and how do you determine the best way that you can help them? Okay, so we utilise our partners and we have four partners which cover each of the need groups. So we have, we help with, uh, we work with Help Heroes, Careers Recovery Service, and then Catch 22, and also City College in Southampton. And these help us to find the participants. And then we, when we're doing our needs assessment, they help us to identify our participants and they recommend them to us and then we can use this to identify those that will be most suitable. Hey, uh, I'm Tony Ryan from Jeffrey's Hall Bed. I've got a question about how you source raw materials for two of your projects on the sanitary towels, but also on the toilets. I can see that you use 60% recycled materials. But how, how do you ensure that that's sustainable and you can continue to those products through. Um, and what about the remaining 40% of those raw materials? So for the 60% recycled materials, uh, we actually work with our partner in Kenya and they actually work with the local council. I mean, they created a contract with our local council that they get all the recycled bottles inside Kissy and they have a local uh, bottle bank and we use that for our toilets, so creating a sustainable source of bottles. And at the same time, we also um, get the local source of materials, the rest of them from local shops in Kissy. So they, uh, we help actually local businesses to strive through the toilet, uh, toilet business as well. And for the sanitary towels, it's the same thing. It's also from uh, local shops as well. And what happened for me? Why? Can you just tell us a little bit more about the finances. I see that you turn over nearly fifty-three thousand pounds in eleven months about a 30 percent profit margin. How did you do that? Okay, so um, we have four uh, commercial businesses that generate our social profit investment. Um, these are, um, one, of the, one of these highlight maybe is a consultancy um, a business where we uh, give consultancy contracts out and then we, they deliver uh, contracts, for example, for the university. Uh, through these four businesses, we um, generate our income. We also get income uh, from funding, from external sources, um, and then also some from the university as well. Tim Smith from Tesco. Um, could you just say a little bit about the science of the toilets, please? Um, and tell me how you will know that the fertilizer is safe for use on crops. <laughs> so, for the uh, science of toilets, uh, we actually work with uh, our partner who are waste recycling specialists, and they've actually done this before in the past. And at the same time, our team has done a lot of research and we work with our engineering department to ensure that everything is safe and we also built the prototype. With, in terms of the waste, we actually tried it with our partner and they've also tried it somewhere else in Uganda. So 
so they actually know uh, the process within it. And we also include in our, uh, in our education packs and step-by-step -step manual uh, all the health and safety protocols to ensure that no harm is done to the entrepreneurs. And we're really excited about Question over there. Hello, Michael Mason from KPMG. I'm fascinated by uh, the new innovative soap product you uh, got available. Well, what do you do about the licensing of that? We've got a major soap manufacturer in the room. They might like to take it from you. Um, so, actually, when we went out there, we found that there's no sort of like um, laws or any licensing to get together to operate soap. Um, so, actually, when we did our research, we found that it's actually very easy to make soap. And when we give our education back, we talk to our partner, and we teach entrepreneurs we make it as simple as possible. So actually, um, there's no actual sort of process here to go to get it done by um, Just in addition to Elliot's point, we also work with our chemistry department in the University of Southampton, and they help us make sure that what we're doing is all right, and it is actually uh, being verified by some of the professors. Yeah. Uh, Paul Logan from Unilever. Um, back to our sanical <laughs> toilet <laughs> solution. Ten toilets in, in that community. It's such a fundamental change that can be done in, in, you know, with that, this type of step. Ten toilets, what's the real potential for that community? How many should be the potential and what would be the unlock to, to get there? Well, I think um, the potential in the community that we're in is absolutely tremendous. Um, really for us it was about, um, because it's such a new project, um, building a, Marsh, a pilot for Marsh here, making sure it absolutely works scaling it around. But I think there's actually a huge amount of potential now to scale it into neighbouring districts and the rest of Kenya. Um, I think like, one of the barriers um, to immediately... I'm sorry, the presentation time has expired.